going to be going over my son's notes in Hindleburg. Um, I have a couple things. I had told him to, to highlight the things that he thought was important and to underline the things he thought was cool. I did that because I want to know what it is he's actually interested in historically. It'll help me teach him better. States. Retired NASA engineer Addison Bryan claims he found that the fatal flaw that had led to the start of the blaze, and it wasn't hydrogen. Now for here. Uh, number one, hydrogen. A big problem is the oxygen. Let's all see what I'm doing. It is not inherently. Flammable. Oxygen in of itself is an accelerant. I probably spelled that wrong. To continue. May 6, 1937, the sky still still the sky still appears moody after a stormy day. A stately survey marble, the 240-ton Hildeburg airship, glides 240 feet above Lysenhurst, New Jersey at around 7:21 p.m. In a six-knot wind, the Zeppelin is attempting to fly high, landing. The crew was throws the spider lines out, preparing for mooring. A gigantic ship, nearly three football fields in length, would be slowly winched down. I asked him to highlight historically accurate. He did very well, so he gets ten points for that. Now, here is something that I need to teach him. I need to teach him what a winch is. And then I'm going to make a Hindleburg quiz. It's been done. Sorry. And I'm just gonna, what day, year, and month did this event occur? Now for math.
and prove it. No, sorry, I'm still reading. If you think you knew exactly what happened next, what actually happened next, Addison Bryan, no, he did not. circle this, which I'm not going to mark him wrong for, but I am going to put on his quiz. The name of the person. Declared he had discovered the with okay. to continue has a surprise for you six decades after the famous and it brings his actor, which he might need to know that. When 36 of 97 aboard died, that is good to know. During the horrific blaze, halted rigged airship travel, Brian revealed a stunning new explanation for what started the fire. Brian, a recently retired engineer and manager for hydrogen programs who has spent more than 30 years at NASA, had recently concluded several years of scientific sleuthing I'm gonna actually add that as to make sure he understands what that means. Work. In search of the culprit behind the, the conflagration, and he combined, combed through thousands of pages of original testimony and materials at four archives in the United States and one in Germany, interviewed survivors, airship sufferers, and ultimately tested original materials from the model. That is correct. The LZ Hildenberg and its compositories. No. Back to my quiz. Contrary to what Investigators ruled at the time of Serge Bryan the fire did not start with hydrogen lit by electrical discharge or sabotage. So.
There we go. The number of the truth about the Hedberg began in the late 1960s. Good to know. Kurt Bryan, a gentle man with a side sick black hair and face lined by many smiles. He is absolutely correct. This is storytelling. It has nothing to do with historically. So I'm glad to see that he did not consider that was important enough to include. No disrespect to the author. I'm strictly speaking from a historical standpoint. I'm glad that he didn't notate that at all. Well, it is good to know. But that's not what the test is not about. The man, the test is about the, the Hindenburger. He was working on a hydrogen safety manual for NASA. Sitting in a Florida room meant... I actually... I don't know what that means. So, then I will find out together. Of the mint and mob tiled floors in a furniture in a Cocoa Beach apartment, Brian recalls how he paced through the literature on hydrogen. Inevitably, we said the topic of the Hindenburg would come up. At the time, I didn't think much about it. What really went down the Hindenburg? Over the years, however, he continued his NASA work in the hydrogen systems. The references began accurate in his mind. What I started to say, but the authors were inconsistent. He says, hydrogen. Director said the gas was so flammable it kept everyone on the head, which isn't true. About one third of those on board had died. That is very good. On the other hand, the hydrogen protesters, policy safety, and concern and complained that those who'd perished not only did so because they jumped from the burning ship, which also was intrusive. Brian, I thought, wait a minute, where are they getting their information? He had also been seen the famous photos of the Hindenburg bright, blazing hot fire, and knew that hydrogen burn didn't burn that way. That is for me for later. Chemistry. A hydrogen fire radiates little white heat and is barely visible to the unaided eye. In 1990, very good, Marcus. Brian pulled a one year assignment in Washington, D.C. at NASA headquarters and then across from the United Air and Space Museum. The airplanes I felt were so there, so lo and behold, there's this 20-foot-long model of the Hindenburg used in the 1975 movie with George C. Scott, he recalls. I'm looking at that model on the plaque on the wall. The plaque says something about how the hydrogen exploded. As an expert, he knew that the pure gas didn't just explode. I apologize for all the flies. My, my door is open. And that was enough. He made an appointment with the archive. Archivists upstairs, Don Pepper, Dr. Gubbs, and lost himself in the decades old documents of the museum Sindelberg's fire for the rest of the day. His research room became something of a part time obsession. Over the next few years, Brian would steal. Away to the archives and travels outdoor to the cards parts in Susan Mellon, pouring through thousands of pages and copying documents in search of answers. Now let's take a look at this. A look inside. The Hindelberg used 16 cells in, to contain the lipton gases. He only encased the hydrogen cells. The idea was to retain expensive helium. Madison brain. The hydrogen being deeply cheap would remain trimmed by venting off the gas ships. So Brian, it was the skin, not the hydrogen, that proves ships undoing. A deadly combo. The cotton skin received one coat of iron oxide and four coats of cyan, which is cellulose vertate uh, acetate, which can include an, an, an aluminum powder. Uh, aluminum powder. 
Gas cells were layered on top to bottom with a fire resistant gelatin latex cloth, solving cloth latex frame cord. So now let's see the position. I'm going to have him come back to this. Because when he is designing, he will need to know. how different materials, gases, interactive plastics, metals, etc. People very much need to know how to do something. How the ship went down. After an unbound boat onto crossing the thousand miles, the hundred boat down in less than a minute. Oh, that's my bad for copying that uh, poorly. It says here um, how all those up and flew and test www.psci.com. Away to the archive and traveled to others in the college park and such and mailed pouring through the thousands of pages and copying documents in search of answers. She even traveled to the Fire Science Lab in Missouri, Montana. That's that's fair. But I'm going to note not necessary. He speculated that perhaps some of the airship material, this is important. He speculated that perhaps some of the airship's materials had a role in the ignition. Maddeningly, however, he couldn't find the exact formulations. I even had the problem, but couldn't, but needed enough evidence to back my story up. He says, "I was as far he got until 1944 when he ran into Richard Tron, Van Tron, a space shuttle technician, in conference in hydrogen. Van Tron assault on tower." A self about helium head and member of the airship aficionados called the Lighter Than Air Society in Akron, Ohio. Um, got a note to myself here. State government. And I'm calling it government because it's history. I was seeking Brian to talk about the hydrogen. Buren, Buren book about airships. Brian spotted the book in the crook of Van Arsham's arms and bought it from him on the spot. And then, to quote the rain from the other book, the rain still splatters on the wall ground and starts and stops. The air is highly charged from the thunderstorms. Investigating this would rule later. Six and three quarter acres of the Hindenburg fabric is still is knitting in the breeze. A witness later would recall bluish electrical phenomenon in the danced over the aft side of the Hindenburger for more than a minute. Now, that brings me to his robotics class. He will need to know how storms, weather, and atmospheric pressure a T M O S P H I R I C pressure interact with his machines. So that's not to me. Through Baron Heron, Brian learned that the pieces of the Hindenburg still existed. Brian traveled around the country to produce them, spending hundreds of dollars buying original materials, books, and papers from Collectors, what was I trying to find out he is? What they were trying to use, specifically use in the coding, he says. Helen Ryan, who is chasing at Lemonhurst. They cursed. Oh.
the thing is, is I was sleeping when he finished this, and he gave it to me, and I didn't look at it at the time. So, he is readily available. I could easily just go do this. But, he's already completed his work, so that is my mistake, not his. So now I'm going to take this, this, this. this uh, for me to take later just to do it on my notes so I took it later 